Welcome to a new video from Lessons in Logic. In this video, we're going to look at the p-value of our strategies. Before you all switch off, this isn't going to be a maths lesson. We are going to use our trading software to support or reject the quality of our strategy. If we can find a low p-value, it indicates there is some skill in arriving at our results. A higher p-value indicates that the results are more random and would be achieved with little or no criteria over a period of time. When I first started trading, I asked in a group if I needed to be concerned with the p-value. I was told a resounding no. Being naive and new to trading, I took this at face value. With my own research and video content from other creators far cleverer than me, I have come to appreciate the significance of the p-value. We will of course delve into the p-value theory and show more examples on our new website, lessonsinlogic.com. Also from here, you'll be able to purchase the CGM Bet software that we are using to look at the p-value amongst other things. You'll be able to purchase this software at a heavily discounted price. It will be the best decision you will make. Before we start, we are so close to 2,000 YouTube subscribers. It would be great to reach this target by the end of the year. If you aren't already subscribed, please do so as it makes a huge difference. If you are subscribed, then thank you for your continued support. It is very much appreciated. So the p-value might be new to you. We are going to keep things simple. We're going to look for games in the current season where the over 2.5 goal odds are higher than the implied odds for the two teams in every fixture. So we've got our expressions for our filter. So column one, we're just looking at the over 2.5 goal odds being lower than 1.8. This might or might not be a good figure, but we can play around with it. I'm just making this up on the spot for this uh, particular exercise. Column two is taking the home team at home percentage of over 2.5 goal games, and it's adding this to the away team and dividing this by two to get the average. We then divide this number by 100 to get the percentage as a value between 0 and 1. Then finally we do 1 divided by this percentage to get the implied odds. We are then checking to see if this is lower than the bookmaker odds for over 2.5 goals. We can save this step as a custom function so we can recall it into other criteria should we wish to. I won't do that now but if you're interested watch my custom functions masterclass video to learn how to do it. Column 3 is almost identical to column 2. We are just showing the implied odds to sense check that our logic is correct. And column 4 is just checking that both teams have played at least 8 games in the data set. We check on an individual basis as even if a fixture list is in round 9, one team may not have fulfilled all of their fixtures up until this point. For example, in the National League this season, Morecambe started their season a few weeks late due to off the field issues. So this gives us 644 games so far this season out of 7,823 that have been played. Normally at this point we'd take this data into the AGS module and see how it has performed. We can still do that if we want to tinker further. But a new feature in CGM Bet, if you just want a quick look at the performance, is the backtesting and p-value button here. So clicking on that gives you a quick overview of all the key markets and how they would have performed including this new p-value column. Straight away we can see that our over two and a half goal strategy that we've just made up isn't profitable. With almost a 10% negative yield it's not great and the p-value is just over 25% which means it might not be a terrible strategy but there's just not enough proof that it is a good strategy. If the p-value here was five or under we could be confident that there was some kind of skill in our criteria and it's not just randomness. This would mean that it was a consistent approach with very little noise. Based on our data across all the leagues, we'd be looking at a loss on every single one of the markets. And we can see that the over 0.5 goal market has got a p-value of 0.49. So there's very little randomness in there. It's just a poor strategy using this criteria as it would have made a loss. If we go league by league, looking at the over 2.5 goal strategy we've just created then we can see that in the Premier League, even though there's only four games, we've got a 25% positive yield, but the p-value is still high. So this is probably still down to look at this stage. If we continue through, then we can see a high p-value and a negative yield on very few games in the Championship. And if we continue through to National League South, then using the criteria for our over two and a half goal strategy, we can see that on the under one and a half strategy, we would be making 112% yield on this and the p-value of 0.43. So on the face of it, that sounds like a good strategy. Sadly though, this is only for 13 games. 
which is not enough games to base a strategy on. Um, certainly keep your eye on it, but I think those numbers, once the games start to increase, uh, will move out to make it more luck than actual skill that we're getting this kind of return. But again, the software is showing us this. Uh, if you didn't have this software, there would be no way of knowing where each strategy was performing. It looks like we're going to have to go back to basics here. Our current strategy is not good. As you would expect from CGM Bet, this functionality is embedded in all modules in the system. So let's check out the Rating V module. As a reminder, this module indicates where the implied odds are more favourable than the bookies odds. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the entire 25-26 season to date and establish if these value odds are giving us any long-term and sustainable profit. So we'll refresh these and we'll come back once the calculations are complete. So we've got here all the games in the current season where the implied odds are lower than the actual bookmakers offered odds for games. And there's no other filtering at this stage. It is just basically based on the odds. But you absolutely should include other criteria as well. But as I'm not giving away production strategies, you'll have to do that part of the work yourself. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run this on every game and see what value we get for the home team win. And as you can see, we're getting a minus 16% yield here and a p-value of 99. So basically what it's saying is uh, this is pure randomness. And you'd have to agree with that because we haven't done anything other than just look at the odds. There's no other criteria in there, so it is just, just random, uh, and that's what the p-value is showing us here. So what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of criteria now. So we'll go for the home odds between 1.5 and 2.5, and we can see now that the yield is now 12% down, and the p-value is still 84%, so it's still very random. Um, we've just put an odds range in there. We've got no other criteria. Let's take a look at back in the draw. Again, we'll load in all games for the current season and we'll just see how we get on. So if we backtest and the p-value on this, we can see that we've won 104 out of the 433 games and we've got a yield of 20% and a p-value of 0.41. So this is actually showing us a real good strategy by the looks of it. Uh, we've got a good yield and we've got a small p-value. Number of games is okay, should really be more, but it's going in the right direction. So have we found something amazing here? It looks good, but when we start interrogating league by league, then we can see a few flaws. So the English Premier League is only nine games. Championship, there's only seven games. League One, two games. So while we may have an inefficiency of the odds overall, we can see that when we look for games league by league, then we get a very small sample, and that is concerning to me at least. Data interpretation is important. Don't force it to tell the story that you want to tell. Overall, it looks good. As you break it down league at a time, there's not really enough data to support the claim. Let's take a look at the data for last season and see if it's a consistent pattern or if we've just been lucky this season so far. So now we've got last year's data loaded and it tells a completely different story. So what we've got here is we would have an 8.67% uh, yield loss and the p-value of 69. So I've said before and I'll say it again, this is why it is always vital to revisit your strategies every season to make sure they're still relevant. So if these two years were flipped around and the current season is showing a good return, then um, this season here is showing an absolute disaster. So there was a lot of randomness in the data and the yield is negative. That's why anyone that says they've been using the same strategy with the same criteria for many years and has made huge profits is talking a load of rubbish. Sorry to put it bluntly, but it is true. Strategy videos just do not work long term. Come at me in the comments if you think otherwise, but be prepared to back it up. So what we've shown you here is that you can have a strategy that is currently showing it is profitable, but that might just be luck and not skill. Without using the p-value, you are unable to prove this. A low p-value and a positive yield is what you are looking for. A positive yield and a high p-value does not mean it is a bad strategy. You just can't prove that it is good. This is probably the simplest way of explaining it. A low p-value and a negative yield is the best way to prove a strategy is bad. I hope this wasn't too heavy for you and you followed along. As a reminder, there will be a blog post on lessonsinlogic.com where we discuss this in more detail. Please do come along and get involved. Remember to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. It does make a difference to us. Thank you for watching.